we're blessed with actually two more uh, opportunities uh, for this consultation. I'd like to ask Bishop, Bishop Stickett to come uh, to the uh, microphone to speak about Reverend Patrick Ryan. Archbishop Lucas said I should speak fast. Anyway, thank you, Archbishop Kurtz, for granting me a few moments on today's agenda to seek the opinion of my brother bishops about the cause of canonization for Father Patrick Ryan, who was a priest of the Diocese of Nashville at the time of his death, but now we claim him since 1988. He was known to be of heroic virtue and with a reputation of holiness and of special intercessory power. Father Ryan was born in 1845 in Tipperary, Ireland, and moved with his family to New York after they were evicted from their family home in Ireland. He entered St. Vincent's College in Cape Girardeau in 1866, and was ordained a priest in the summer of 1869 in the cathedral in Nashville, Tennessee by Bishop Augustine Fian. He served the Catholic faithful in Clarksville, Cedar Hill, Edgefield Junction and other places and eventually was transferred to St. Peter and Paul in Chattanooga in 1872 now known as the Basilica of St. Peter and Paul. Father Ryan's assignment required a bit of travel but the Catholic community was small and spread very thin throughout the lower part of the state but he was beloved by his congregation and throughout the whole southeast part of Tennessee. Father Ryan convinced the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia out of Nashville to open a school in Chattanooga, which was named Notre Dame High School, which still functions today, and opened the school on January 6, 1876. Unfortunately, only two years after opening the school, it was converted into a hospital and an orphanage when yellow fever hit Chattanooga on September 18, 1878. Several days later, an epidemic was declared, and Father Ryan was one of the few of the city's Christian pastors who stayed to minister to the sick. Eyewitnesses testified that he went from house to house, visiting Catholic and non-Catholic in the most infected section of the city, doing what he could for the sick and anointing the dying. At that time in Chattanooga, the Catholic population was 0.02%. Father Ryan uh, contracted the fatal illness on September 26th and died two days later after receiving viaticum from his brother, Father Michael Ryan. Father Ryan's last request was to bury me in Chattanooga among my people. And for eight years, the grave of Father Ryan was a hollow spot kept beautifully tended by the hands of those who revered his memory, Catholic and non. When a Catholic cemetery finally was opened, Mount Olivet, on November 11th, 1886, a solemn procession carried Father Ryan's remains to the new graveyard, and the Bishop of Na Na uh, Nashville at the time officiated at the very first pontifical requiem mass that was ever celebrated in Chattanooga. In his homily, Father William Walsh spoke of the great charity, generosity, and self-sacrifice of Father Ryan, and when the procession left the church to go to his new resting place, at the highest point in the new cemetery where the priests are buried, uh, the procession was over a mile long with more than 100 carriages, again in a place where the Catholic population was about, at that time, it grown to maybe 0.04%. Mm -hmm. uh, to have hundreds of people along the, uh, the route was just a magnificent um, testimony to his memory. In 1890, Father Ryan's name was inscribed on one of the memorial windows in the new church of now the St. Peter and Paul Basilica when the Ch Chattanooga Knights of Columbus Council was formed in 1901. They chose to be named the Father Patrick Ryan Council and his memory is still uh, included in so many stories in, in East Tennessee and especially in the Chattanooga region. His memory is still uh, proclaimed as a man of great holiness, a man of great charity, and especially as a great example in, uh, in our day and age for somebody who could reach out to not only the Catholic community, but the non-Catholic community in an area where the Catholic community now numbers about 2.4% throughout of all of East Tennessee. 
So I, Bishop I, Sticka, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the presentation. And let's see if there may be some comments before we move the action that you've requested. Bishop Boyer. Uh, question, Bishop Sticka. Uh, it says on page three, the handout that we've been given out of the biography by the deacon, that he died a martyr's death in the yellow fever epidemic. Is this just mere hyperbole, or is that going to be the grounds for... Uh, for, for pursuing yeah, what we're looking at the the concept of a of a Christian of a uh, martyr of charity a person who gave his life uh, knowing that he would probably uh, die of the disease of people that he was servicing but it's not in the traditional definition I guess mm -hmm. of a martyr we do have some miracles associated with Father Ryan uh, the city of Knoxville has a minor league baseball team that had 14 members of the Chicago Cubs and many people prayed for his intercession. <laughs> and we all know the rest of the story. Thanks, Bishop Sticka. Let's see, are there any other questions that we would have? I see no other hands, so why don't we move the action? I think that would be quite appropriate. On behalf of Bishop Sticka, uh, does the body support advancing the cause of canonization of Father Patrick Ryan on the local level in accord with the applicable prescriptions of the universal law. Are you ready for that question? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Bishop Sticka, thank you. Thank you. And Have the Cleveland, Cleveland fans, you can pray to him next year. May I ask uh, Bishop uh, 